Web 1 factory into today's video, we're going to have a look at the weather for the next 8 to 10 days in today's video. Also having a look at the weather for the next couple of days tomorrow and again Sunday, when of course, as you know, it's been a lot about it on uh, the weather forecast on the telly and in the papers. Uh, we've got the remains of Tropical Storm uh, or even Hurricane Bertha coming into the northern Atlantic and it's bearing down on us on Sunday, but the exact track is hard to pin down, so the exact detail on Sunday's weather is difficult. We'll have a look at the very latest solution from the GFS model for Sunday. In a moment, before we get on with that, they just say about the advertising their video ads on my pages at gazwellvis.com you could hit play on the video ad you'll be helping to support gazwellvis.com thanks so much for doing that the video ad really pays me to sit here and talk to you via website so if you could press play and uh, see what the ad is about uh, you are helping to support gazwellvis thanks so much for doing that so let's start off with tomorrow's uh, rain before we do anything else this is the high resolution Euro 4 model from the website Weather Online. You can find the link to weatheronline.co.uk on my uh, links page. Starting off at 6 o'clock in the morning tomorrow, we see that we have got a few showers down in the southeast. There's not a lot going on. There's some rain uh, out across Ireland. As we move through uh, the course of Friday morning, you find heavy showers breaking out across parts of northern England, the east regions, things you down in towards East Anglia in particular. And then moving through in towards the evening, things really develop across. Well, it's particularly stretched out from uh, the southeast of England up through East Anglia, perhaps in towards uh, the Midlands, on in towards Northern England, particularly focused around Northern England, because some heavy rain, maybe in some thunderstorms um, breaking out. And then going off in towards uh, Friday night, Saturday morning, this is midnight Saturday, by that rain pushing northwards into Scotland. Now, this rain is not as significant and uh, as widespread as well as have been indicating a day or so ago so it looks like we could get away with this a little bit this is a very heavy cluster of rain here uh, across france uh, that was forecast to push northwards in towards uh, the british isles through the course of friday this is the uh, GFS uh, 6 o'clock run, the latest run of the GFS is with midnight Friday. That area of heavy rain across northern France was forecast to move northwards, but now the idea is that the area of heavy rain will actually move through the north of France and not really push northwards. Although we do have more rain, as we saw on the high resolution Euro format, we do have more rain breaking out, particularly across northern parts down in towards the Midlands and uh, East Anglia. The worst of it looks like it is actually uh, keeping over northern parts of France. So we get away with it a little bit as we go through the course of Friday. As we go into midnight Saturday, that rain then curves northwards through Belgium and Holland and goes up in towards the North Sea. So it's taking a very similar track to a track it was always forecast to take, just that it's doing it a few hundred miles to the east of the country. So it looks like we're going to more or less get away with things on Friday. Although there will be rain breaking out, particularly over northern England, so that could be quite heavy. But I think the risk of flooding for Friday and Saturday morning is somewhat lower. This cluster of heavy rain here, uh, out in the central part of the Atlantic, that is the low pressure that we're concerned about for Sunday. And there it is on the GFS chart for 6 o'clock in the evening on Saturday, that area of low pressure there is the one that contains the remains of a hurricane or ex-tropical storm Bertha. And let's see what the GFS does with that uh, area of low pressure on the very latest 6 o'clock run. Here it comes again 6 o'clock in the morning. It brings it in across England and Wales as a 990 millibar area of low pressure. That's very deep uh, for the time of the area has tropical remains within it so there's bound to be some very heavy rain with that quite tightly packed ice bars as well on this latest run of the gfs model indicating that we would be expecting at the very least strong winds possibly up to gale force around southern and western coast and as we go through to six o'clock in the evening on sunday that low pressure moves northwards in towards northern England, again very tightly packed ice bars on its southern side so it could be very windy across many parts of england and wales but risk of gales around western hills and coast uh, the leaves of course are in full leaf the trees i should say are in full leaf so we would be uh, looking at the possibility of some trees coming down uh, with this i would imagine having a look at the rainfall forecast for sunday well there we have the heaviest of the rain across southern parts of Ireland through the irish sea in towards wales and southwest england six o'clock in the morning some very torrential rain uh, mixed in with that as we move through the course of sunday battle pushes northwards and eastwards perhaps not too bad down in the south 
South East. It looks like the rain shield for East Anglia South East could continue to work for you. Not too bad there, but elsewhere, quite a lot of heavy rain uh, moving in off the Atlantic through of Sunday. And it all pushes northwards and eastwards through the course of the day. Temperatures could be really quite uh, depressed as well as we go through sunny perhaps not too bad in the extreme east setting up to around 20 or 21 there but generally most parts of the country just in below to mid teens with all that wind and rain around that will be feeling very cool and autumnal but the uh, scenario for Sunday is changing uh, run by run and model by model so not all models are in agreement with Sunday's developments we again don't have to wait for till this comes into the time frame of the high res models um, tomorrow before we can start getting more confidence on it. Let's have a look at the next week to 10 days. These are the 500 bit of our height anomaly flow charts as I uh, often show you on a Thursday. We've got the ECMDF here on the left. GFS is over on the right. 500 bit of ours, 80,000 feet is an area in the atmosphere where weather is taking place. High pressure, low pressure being moved around by the jet stream running above. We've got uh, the orange colours here indicating high pressure the blue colors indicating uh, low pressure these are the uh, mean flow charts for eight to ten days time this will be taking us up to around the 17th of august into the second half second half of the month uh, we've still got an area below the heights on the on the uh, ecm sitting to the east of northeast country a ridge of high pressure out in the central part of the atlantic the jet stream is going something like that through the country and around that trough so well that's a pretty cool scenario if you uh, follow where the airstream is coming from there the air is originating from uh, greenland coming down across the country so it's going to be a cool scenario it's a pretty unsettled scenario as well the uh, gfs is very similar again a ridge of high pressure is out in the central part of the atlantic the trough of low pressure to the northeast of the country the airstream with this is coming from the northwestern part of the atlantic we're on the cool side of the jet or the jet is running through the country more or less on the cool side of it so it's pretty cool and pretty unsettled really up to and perhaps even a little bit beyond uh, the middle of the month not great 500 mil of our high to normally charts you have to say here's the gfs temperature and precipitation ensembles for london red line here is the 30 year average going to be around average for the next day or two but from the weekend and into south next week going to start to go below average see that uh, there's good agreement there that we are going below the red line below the 30 year average and we stay that way uh, through much of next week actually this is the 15th of uh, august just here at the end of next week as we get through to the second half half of the ensemble things do start to pick up a little bit but it's a very uh, much a struggle really to get those temperatures going back above uh, average so if anything we're probably keeping it below average for a bit uh, into the second half of the month as well so no real sign there of a heat wave there's a few out near runs but uh, nothing really would indicate it's anything particularly hot coming up through uh, august the uh, precipitation spikes shows that we have got more rain to come this is rain associated uh, with tomorrow's weather this is the rain associated with sunday's weather these rainfall spikes are not as bad as they were a few days ago uh, nevertheless there will be rain around over the next few days as we go out into next week we keep these spikes going there is a bit of a drying trend perhaps particularly as we get through to the second half of the month but overall it looks pretty mixed i think through next week there will be at the very least showers around the temperature anomaly for uh, the next week the 7th to 15th of August shows up we're going to be around for even a little bit uh, below average in those very pale blue curves indicating temperatures coming out yeah perhaps a degree or so below where they should be the rainfall anomaly shows that the north and west are getting the worst of the rain uh, with those blue curves notice the southeast is in most regular so it's a little bit drier than average but that is a very unsettled pattern overall a little bit drier than average overall for east anglia and southeast and parts of england hard to explain why that's going on because generally across the northwestern parts of europe uh, it's quite uh, a wet seam it is above average rainfall for most parts of northwest europe but just in the southeast there's that little little bit of red there indicating it's a bit drier than average that's the southeast rain shield the famous southeast rain shield uh, coming into play it is a very uh, surprisingly perhaps dry place across east and southeastern parts of england 
So just have a look at the uh, generic charts for a go. This is GFS for the middle of next week. Low pressure to the north of Scotland is in control. If I'm the isobars map, the air is originating from a very cool quarter, really, up in towards Iceland and uh, to the north of Scotland, certainly uh, around Green, perhaps, as well. So it's not going to be very warm, to say the least. It's most unsettled in the north and the northwest. As we go through to the latter stages of next week, there's no real change. The low pressure continues to the east of the northeast. The country. high pressure is well out in the central part of the Atlantic not really able to uh, imp, uh, to uh, sort of uh, have an influence on our weather. The isobars again are going back to a cool uh, part, part of the northern Atlantic so it will be cool through uh, the second half of next week. The high pressure tries to reach in a little bit as we get through towards the end of next week and next weekend but uh, it's only really for the south and it may dry out, turn a bit warmer, it's still unsettled up to the north and notice there there's the suggestion of a bit of high pressure building over Greenland that's something that's cropping up a little bit this morning on the GFS have to keep an eye on that if you start to set up some northern blocking that could really start to lock us into a cool and wet pattern as we go through into uh, the last stages of August there was a suggestion yesterday that things could get a bit warmer and drier from the second half of August so that seems to be going away from the GFS uh, a little bit this morning have a look at the ECM doing left for next week. Uh, there's the middle of next week, and we've got the low pressure again to the north and the east. High pressure out west. Isobars are going out to the northwest, so it's going to be cool. It'll be showery in the north and the east in particular. Moving through to the second half of next week, the high pressure again tries to reach in across England, so things could turn a bit better later on next week down in the south and the southwest. A little bit warmer uh, with sunny spells, but perhaps quite chilly by night, but still showery up in the north. And then where the East End WF actually goes beyond that into next weekend, it gets, all, gets a bit odd really. We've got this area of low pressure sitting to the south of Iceland. Pressure trying to ridge up towards Greenland. A bit of high pressure forming in form of Northern blocking. Now, I'm not sure what's going on with that, but overall, that's still relatively cool. And pretty showery, particularly for the north and the east, probably. So, in uh, summary, it does look as though it's staying pretty mixed, really, over the uh, week to ten days. Um, Going to be showery at the very least, particularly to the northeast. That's not too bad down in the south and southeast. I think you could continue to have largely dry conditions. Just going to be a lot cooler than it was for much of July, but still perhaps not too bad there. But otherwise, a lot of showers around next week. And uh, temperatures will be on the disappointing side as well so not a great outlook uh, to be honest and in terms of what's happening at the weekend all eyes are on the remains of tropical storm Bertha we'll try and firm up on it tomorrow exact detail on it as it comes into the high res models also if we have a look at the rest of August into the start of September can you believe with the JMA model that's it for now thanks for watching <laughs>